Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach. So this time we're going to take a look at transformer current calculations. Now we're just going to kind of, you know, learn the basics of it. And then as we're, you know, once you guys get the core, we'll be able to expand with more videos and just different practice questions. Also, some of these questions will be reflected in the, you know, the testing center. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so let's go ahead and do a practice question. What is the secondary current of a transformer that has a four to one turn ratio and a primary current of three amps? To calculate the current of either primary or the secondary, you can use the turn ratio to help you. The turn ratio is the opposite ratio of the current ratio. Just take the four to one turn ratio, flip it, and now you have a one to four current ratio. For every one amp on the primary, there's gonna be four amps on the secondary. So if the primary current is three amps, then you would just multiply it by four. Three multiplied by four equals 12. And we're gonna select D. In future videos, I'm gonna teach you how you can double check your work if you know the voltage. Let's move on. What is the secondary current of a transformer that has a two to one turn ratio and a primary current of three amps? To calculate the current of either the primary or the secondary, you can use the turn ratio to help you. The turn ratio is the opposite ratio of the current ratio. Just take the two to one turn ratio and flip it. For every one amp on the primary side, there are two amps on the secondary side. So if the primary current is three amps, then you would just multiply it by two. Three multiplied by two equals six. So we select C. Hey guys, before you go, we just launched an Electrical Code Coach Facebook page. So if you want to, you can head over to facebook.com and check it out. It's Electrical Code Coach. I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to go over there, maybe give us, a, give us a thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment if this program has helped you, has inspired you, has encouraged you, or anything like that. So if you want to do that, that would help a lot. Thanks. Hey everyone, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and I'm really excited about today's video. We're going to be learning about transformer turn ratios. So we're not going to get into the super complexity of all the different algebra, but we're just going to teach you a real practical way on how to calculate in between turn ratios and the voltage. Uh, and this is really, you know, it's great knowledge just to know, you know, just to have a good understanding of it. And it's also could really help you on your test. Uh, there's a chance in your journeyman and masters at any level, you're going to be facing a transformer turn ratio question. And this, uh, if you master this principle, you should be able to answer any of them that you're faced with. So let's go ahead and get started. What is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a four to one turn ratio and a primary voltage of 480? This turn ratio is stating that for every four volts on the primary side, there is one volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every four windings of wire on the primary side, there's one winding of wire on the secondary side. To find the secondary output, in this case, you would divide the primary voltage by four and figure out what one unit would be. So you take 480, you divide it by four, and that is going to give you 120. You can double check your work by taking the one unit that you found, multiplying it again by four, and making sure that you get back to the primary voltage. This is going to be a 480, 120 step down transformer. And we're going to select A. What is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a two to one turn ratio and a primary voltage of 480? This turn ratio stating that for every two volts on the primary side, there's one volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every two windings of wire on the primary, there is one winding of wire on the secondary. To find out what the secondary output would be in this case, you would divide the primary voltage by two and figure out what one unit would be. So we take 480, we divide it by two, and that is going to give us 240. Now we can double check our work by multiplying back that one unit that we found. So we take 240 multiplied by two, and that's gonna bring us back to our primary voltage, which is 480. This is a 480 
240 step down transformer. And we're going to select D. All right, what is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a 1 to 4 ratio and a primary voltage of 120? This turns ratio stating that for every 1 volts on the primary side, there's going to be 4 volts on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every 1 winding of wire on the primary, there are 4 windings of wire on the secondary. In this case, we already know what 1 unit is on the primary side. It's 120. To find out what four of them would be, we will just multiply. So we take 120 multiplied by four, and that's going to give us 480. And we now find out that this is a 120, 480 step-up transformer. And we're going to select C. What is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a 1 to 2 ratio and a primary voltage of 120? This turn ratio is stating that for every one volts on the primary side, there are two volts on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every one winding of wire on the primary, there are two wire windings of wire on the secondary. In this case, we already know what one unit is on the primary. It's 240. To find out what two of them would be, we'll just multiply. So we take 240 multiplied by 2 equals 480. This is a 240-480 step-up transformer. And we're going to select B. All right, guys, let's do one more to show you that you can use this relationship back and forth, whether you know the primary or the secondary. What is the primary voltage of a transformer that has a 4 to 1 turn ratio and a secondary voltage of 120? This turn ratio stating that for every 4 volts on the primary side, there is 1 volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every 4 windings of wire on the primary side, there's 1 winding of wire on the secondary. To find out what the primary output would be in this case, you would just multiply the secondary voltage by 4 to figure out what the total would be. So we take 120 multiplied by 4, that's going to equal 480. This is a 480-120 step-down transformer. And we're going to select C. So I hope you guys learned a little bit in this lesson on how to calculate this. You can use this relationship back and forth. Just stop and think, what do I know? And what can I do back or forth to figure out what the other one is? So if I know the higher one or I know the lower one, I can use either multiplication or division to figure out what the other one is. So I hope you guys have a great day. Please like and subscribe. What's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to be looking at overcurrent protection for transformers. We're going to try a new method of showing you guys some things. So just bear with me a little bit and we'll see if it works. So let's look at the question. What size primary only overcurrent protection device would you select for a 480 volt transformer that has a current of 11 amps? So we're going to start straight from scratch here. So we're going to close our code book. We're going to slide this up here. We're going to close our code book. And what we're going to do is is I want to show you guys um, how to use the keyword and index process to find this question. So we're going to look. We're looking for transformers as our overall, uh, you know, theme of the question. So let's go here. Let's flip back. L-N-N-O-P. Q-R-S. T. So we get back here to transformers. When you guys see these questions and you're like, oh, man. You know, like, well, you know, what do I do? You just go through the process. You do the same process every time. So we get here in T for transformers. Now our question states, okay, for overcurrent protective devices. So now we're looking for in transformers. Now we're dealing with overcurrent protection. Come down through here, alphabetical order, overcurrent protection. Now we're going to go to the first article, okay, but we're going to leave our hand in the back just in case it's not what we need. So let's head over to 450.3. We're going to flip over here. If we close our book, I think we have a Transformers tab. That'll get us in 450, or you can get yourself close. Okay, so we end up in 450.3. So we end up in overcurrent protection. Just really quick read. It says, overcurrent protection of Transformers shall comply with part A, B, and C of 450.3. So we flip over here. What's part 1 say? I'm going to pick up the camera and kind of zoom in here. It says, uh, Transformers for over 1,000 volts. If we look at our question, it's a 480-volt transformer, so that doesn't work. 
Okay, part B is for transformers a thousand volts or less. Okay, so what we do is we look around here and we're looking at these tables. And this table is uh, 450.3A. And if we look up here, that's for a thousand volts nominal or higher. And if we look over here, we are dealing with 450.3B. And now I'm going to step into the other mode with the camera. Okay, so now that we're in the correct table, we just want to read the heading and make sure that we're in the right section. It said that part B was what we wanted to deal with. Um, we're dealing with transformers 1,000 volts or less. Okay, now we just read our question. So our question stated that we had... So our question stated that we had uh, 480 volts and it said that there was a current of 11 amps and we were dealing with primary protection only. So we're dealing with primary protection only. We are going to fall in the currents of 9 amperes or, amperes or more. So it says there's a 125% demand factor and we need to see note 1. So we quickly slip down here to note 1. It says we're 125% of this current does not correspond with the standard rating. Then we're allowed to use the next size up. So it's the next size up rule for this. So we're going to go ahead and do our math. We know that we have 11 amps. 11 multiplied by 1.25. That is going to give us 13.75 amps. We know that there is no 13.75 amp breaker. So now we're going to flip over to 240.6a. And if you've been practicing in the free videos, we go through this stuff extensively. So we're just basically following the same process. And we're in 240.6a. Ours was 13.75 amps. We go and we select a 15 amp overcurrent device. So this is basically just a reiteration of what we've been doing just doing a different way so anytime you get in the test and you get thrown an oddball question like that just go through the same steps remember the keyword and index process remember um how to read you know just slow down read your tables read the table headings you know how to apply demand factors and if you don't you can go back and take our free 10-week course we cover all this stuff it's absolutely for free right here on youtube and then you're going to head over to 240.6a select the next size up and you're going to select a 15. So I hope this video helped you guys. I hope this method of delivery works and you guys have a great night.